Welcome to the Medicare for the Lazy Man podcast. The Medicare podcast for lazy people of all persuasions. And now proving you can take the boy out of Oklahoma, Medicare expert, Doug Jones. Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Medicare for the Lazy Man podcast starring yours truly, Doug Jones, your Medicare expert or specialist, however you want to define me. I don't know what my Canadian nephew, Drew McMillan, said this morning, but I'm sure it was pithy and I'm sure it was very clever. And I am here in order to uh, help you feel more confident about Medicare. How clever is that, huh? I doubt that he even told you that much. The whole thing is that uh, Medicare is kind of a scary time of life for a lot of people. Uh, There is a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of um, uh, people uh, complaining about the fact that it's too complicated. It's too much work to figure out what to do. You might violate some federal law, wind up in the penitentiary in Leavenworth, Kansas, or someplace if you don't do everything perfectly right. And I am here to tell you that it's really not that bad. And the way I tell you that, the way I convey my message is to encourage people to go buy my book, Medicare for the Lazy Man. The current edition is 2024. We're sneaking up on 2025, but we're not there yet. And I suggest that you go to barnesandnoble.com or Amazon.com to purchase your copy of Medicare for the Lazy Man. Once you have that book in your hands, it's a quick read. It's a fairly lighthearted read, and you'll realize that uh, Medicare doesn't have to be a scary, threatening time of your life. It can actually be an improvement in the cost and quality of your health insurance coverage. Now, if you go to Amazon.com, you're going to find that there are four different uh, uh, editions of the book. There is a regular paperback that seems to be the most popular edition. There's the Audible book in which somebody else does all the heavy lifting for you. And there is the Kindle version, which is very, very uh, reasonably priced. It's about $4.80, if I recall. And when you push that button indicating that you complete the purchase of the book, it will appear in your Kindle reader, your ebook reader. Uh, assuming Amazon supports your uh, your version of that uh, device, and you will have the book right away at about the cheapest price possible. And then, of course, on the other end of the spectrum is the magnificently crafted hardcover version of Medicare for the Lazy Man. Uh, you know who you are if you're a hardcover kind of person. It's a $24 purchase, but, you know, there are some people who, who think quality comes uh, without any... Uh, regard to price. And so those are the uh, choices that you'll have when you go to amazon.com. If you go to barnesandnoble.com, it's just the paperback, but it's juiced up a little bit with colorful illustrations. So if you like to have a brightly colored uh, book, then maybe that's the one for you. In any event, when you get the book, you'll find my contact information inside the book. And when it's time for you to start thinking about Medicare, maybe you're a couple of months away from retirement, maybe you're a couple of months away from your 65th birthday, whenever it's time for you to start thinking about Medicare, you can use that contact information to send me an email, and I will happily respond and give you the benefit of my experience and my my wisdom. (laughs) Some people would laugh at that, but I'm deadly serious. So let's uh, get together and help you get across that Medicare finish line, shall we? Speaking of crossing lines, uh, I've got uh, a guy on the other side of my computer screen who's just raring to go today. He's wearing his blue shirt and in denial, he says, no, it was, I didn't know my blue shirt was coming up for uh, rotate, coming up in the rotation today. I should have worn my red shirt. It's election day today. And he and I are rooting for the same team and we're hoping that we have an excellent outcome, but we just don't know for sure if that's going to happen. Randy, uh, do you have any opinion as to how the day is going to turn out? Well, I have no opinion other than I want it to go my direction. 
Oh. Well, there you go. You and I are, <laughs> fortunately, you and I are rooting for the same team. So uh, I, you don't know how it's going to end up. I don't know how it's going to end up. And I can only say that if we weren't basically optimists, then we probably wouldn't be doing whatever it is we're doing. True. Very true. Very On the true. other hand, we've been kicked in the teeth plenty of times, though, haven't we? Well, you know, that has happened in the past, but I'm hoping not today. Yeah, same here. So we'll uh, assume that things are going to go our way, and that's the only way we're going to be able to do an interesting episode for the audience. I think it's our responsibility to pretend that everything is hunky-dory. Yeah, hunky and dory. We like yes, that. Exactly right. Exactly right. Haven't well, we talked in the past about where hunky-dory came from? Yeah, and I I said that I thought it brought to mind a dory as a small rowboat, and it uh, really reminded me of the round rowboat that was featured in part of the movie of the, um, God, uh, the Robert Louis Stevenson, Treasure Island. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And and there was that kind of retarded old guy who had been out in the sun too long, Ben Gunn, G-U-N-N. And I think I remember him rowing around or paddling a round boat that was like a skin stretched over a round framework. And I always wondered, how in the hell do you make that thing go in one direction? <laughs> well, maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't. That's entirely possible that he was just sitting out there going around in circles. That could be true. So anyway, one of my responsibilities. And you have many. The, the nominal, highly paid producer of this podcast. That's a, there's a little sarcasm there, ladies and gentlemen. To pick, <laughs> to pick, to pick one article to use as the Medicare Advantage Minute. Yes, absolutely correct. And I should have sent you a, an up-to-date list. Maybe I did today. Well, I've got a list. I'm going to pick a number, and if we've already used it, that means I get to pick another. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to go for 21. 21 is wide open and ready to be picked. So All gonna, righty. Let's I'm gonna, use 21. We like 21. I like 20. to play 21. I like to win at 21. Yeah, that's the only reason to play it, isn't it? Is if you're actually right. going to win. Okay, so article number 21 is coming out of the pile, and the pile is going to be set aside. And I am going to now reveal. Uh, does this sound like the Funkin' Wagnalls uh, reveal? On Funkin' Wagnalls the... since noon today on the porch of Funkin' Wagnalls. And here is the headline: More than 500,000 Americans set to lose their Medicare Advantage plans. This is the segment in which we read about Medicare Advantage in an effort to warn our listeners that Medicare Advantage is not the way to go. If you enroll yourself in a Medicare Advantage plan when you first hit Medicare, you've got one year to fix it. Otherwise, you'll have to show evidence of good health. And if you don't have good health, then you're stuck in Medicare Advantage as far as I can tell, for the rest of your life. Um, it's just the kind of thing that behaves like a roach motel. You can check in, but you might not be able to check out, and that's what a Medicare Advantage plan is. So more than 500,000 Americans are scheduled to lose their Medicare Advantage plans now that Humana is leaving 13 markets across the country. And, boy, I've already heard from some people that I did not expect to hear from their brand new clients who have lost their Medicare Advantage plans and they're looking for replacement coverage that can't be taken away from them. Once you have a Medicare supplement plan, it cannot be taken away from you like these Medicare Advantage plans are being watered up and thrown in the wastebasket. So let me read on. The company's chief financial officer made the announcement during a Wells Fargo healthcare conference this month which must have been like September, saying that roughly 560,000 members would need to find a new plan. That impacts roughly 10% of its Medicare Advantage participants. Nearly all of those members have other options. That is not atypical when we do plan exits. Now, that woman was saying that uh, she, you know, talking like this happens all the time, but it doesn't happen all the time. Those, those companies, those Medicare Advantage uh, insurance companies have been growing. They haven't been shrinking. So this is uh, definitely an unusual event. In most cases, there will still be Medicare Advantage plans available from other companies, even in areas where there might not be any Humana plans. Um, 
the exit itself is positive in the sense that those plans were not contributing. And so just ex- exiting, even if we don't retain members, is positive. If we do ultimately retain more of those members, that is incrementally positive because the plan choices left behind are priced in a way that will be positively contributing. I think what she's saying here is that we weren't screwing and ripping off our clients well enough. So we're going to dump the people that we weren't extracting enough money from, and we're going to concentrate on selling more plans that do extract money from people because we want to see our profits grow even higher. Many insurers have been leaving the markets after the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, otherwise the government, decided to lower its benchmark rate, leading to reduced profits for insurers across the country. Humana is also anticipating that members will utilize their supplemental benefits from over-the-counter cards to dental services at higher rates, leading to some of the financial changes. We are anticipating an even higher level of utilization in some of those services in the fourth quarter of 2024, just recognizes Uh, just recognizing the benefit changes we've made for the following year. If people get visibility to that, then knowing that those benefits will be reduced, we do anticipate even further elevated use of some of those benefits. Earlier in the year, Humana said it would be ending some plans and cutting benefits for patients in 2025 due to financial concerns. Currently, around 6 million Americans are insured through Humana's Medicare Advantage. The insurer recently warned that rising health care costs are squeezing their business model, forcing them to slash benefits and potentially exit some markets altogether. Humana's CEO also previously said that the company was forced to make some cuts based on changes in the industry. We acknowledge that the industry is experiencing a dynamic and challenging time, and we must navigate it. Humana's decision reflects an industry-wide shift as insurers decide how to remain profitable while still offering health plans to Americans. United CEO also indicated they were navigating some financial headwinds. I think that means that they're having trouble making a profit. Headwinds is not a good thing in the uh, world of high finance. (laughs) So our strategy continues to focus on providing as much stability as possible, uh, says uh, United Healthcare CEO. Mutual of Omaha also stopped, completely stopped offering its standalone Medicare prescription drug plans. They just left the marketplace. They just said, we're not going to sell any more Medicare prescription drug plans due to all the higher costs related to the government's Inflation Production Act. If major cuts are looming, it may be time to reevaluate your options, whether that's shopping for a better Medicare Advantage plan or transferring to traditional Medicare with a Medicare supplement. And that's what one of these insurance company honchos has said. And I agree with that. It's probably time before you lose the ability to provide evidence of good health that you uh, switch to a Medicare supplement. And that would be underwritten, but it's not strongly underwritten. In other words, the look back period for maybe serious uh, health problems that you've had is often just a couple of years. Sometimes those health questionnaires are very benign. And if that's the case, then you probably have a very good chance of getting much better coverage at a very reasonable price. So that is what I'm all about, is helping people escape from the Medicare Advantage plans and move to Medicare supplement plans. Okay, now, changing channels completely. I have a a new toy. I haven't told Randy about this, and if he hasn't looked at the notes that I sent in for today's today's, uh, episode, then he doesn't know what I'm talking about. But I was informed that a new AI search engine is out there on the horizon. Now, you're Mr. Technology. Have you ever heard of perplexity? Oh, Randy forgot to turn his microphone on. He's been pontificating. Nope. 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 That's a new one. That's a new one. Well, I got this thing, and I said, okay, I'm going to sign up, because I'm always looking for something that's less biased than the uh, search engines that I have been forced to use up until now. Uh, either they're biased on the wrong direction or they're awkward to use. And I've been looking for an improvement. So when this thing came my way, perplexity.ai is where you get it. And it seems to me that it's pretty good. And so the first thing I asked, because I'm an egomaniac, was was I typed typed in Medicare for the lazy man. Now I'm going to do that right now. 
and uh, I'm on my phone, so my fat thumbs are getting in the way of the other letters here. Medicare for the lazy men. And I was very impressed with the answer that came up, and here it comes again. Now, this is an AI-sponsored um, or powered, AI-powered search engine. It says, Medicare for the Lazy Man by Douglas B. Jones is a straightforward guide designed to simplify the process of understanding and enrolling in Medicare. It aims to make the experience less daunting by providing concise instructions on what actions to take and when without the hassle of dealing with insurance agents. The book reveals lesser-known cost savings. This is about Medicare for the Lazy Man, the book. The book reveals lesser-known cost-saving Medicare options that are often overlooked by agents due to commission structures. And uh, additionally, it offers a lighthearted approach, making the learning process more enjoyable. I thought, oh, man, that is fantastic. This is maybe the best search engine I've ever encountered. That offers- is not. That is really not too bad. I was highly impressed with that. And then I, <laughs> like a, you know, another true egomaniac, I put my own name in there and I'm doing it again right now. Douglas B is in Bravo Jones. And let's see if the same kind of quality answer count comes up again. It's got my picture, my <laughs> probably 15 year old picture. <laughs> mm, boy, just looking at myself just makes me want to choke. And it says here, here's uh, the what it says about Douglas B. Jones, who is me. It says, Douglas B. Jones is a health insurance expert and author known for his work on Medicare. After graduating from the University of Arizona, he joined his family's John Hancock Insurance Agency, but later focused on health insurance. He authored Medicare for the Lazy Man, offering simplified Medicare advice and hosts a related podcast. Separately, another Douglas B. Jones is an illustrator. Oh, well. We don't need to dwell on any other Douglas B. Joneses. And so then I spent most of the afternoon over the weekend, uh, the day that I found perplexity.ai, and I really uh, was wallowing in my own self-aggrandizement, and I uh, frankly didn't even have time to check out Randy and his company and uh, to see what they had to say about uh, uh, C2C. AZ, and I'm hoping that we can do that in a future episode. In any event, as Randy just informed me, using the secret sign language that we have, um, it's time for a Medicare Advantage, Medicare Advantage, Medicare um, for the Lazy Man commercial break. So while you're enjoying these fine commercials, I'm going to cough and clear my throat. Bye-bye. Well, that was almost medicinal. I'm hoping everybody else had a good time while I was busy dealing with whatever crawled into my throat while I was asleep last night. In any event, uh, it's time to resume our attack on Medicare-type stuff. And uh, I was talking about Perplexity, the new AI-powered search engine, and I thought, my God, if we're talking enough about Medicare Advantage plans, let's see what Perplexity would say about that. So I entered the question into perplexity.ai. Uh, I said, what hospitals do not accept Medicare Advantage insurance? And the answer was pretty lengthy and uh, fairly meaty. I, uh, the answer is many hospitals across the United States have been dropping Medicare Advantage plans due to various challenges. Here are some points about hospitals not accepting Medicare Advantage insurance. Here are the reasons for dropping Medicare Advantage. Hospitals cite several reasons, including high denial rates, slow payments, the administrative burden, and financial losses. And several major health systems have uh, recently dropped some or all Medicare Advantage plans, including Scripps Health. That involved 30,000 insured people that had to go looking for new doctors. Wellspan Health in Pennsylvania, ECU Health in North Carolina, St. Charles Health Systems in Oregon. Uh, There's an outfit in Maine, Sanford Health in uh, South Dakota. The scope of the issue, the trend of hospitals dropping Medicare Advantage plans appears to be widespread. Hospitals in at least 11 states have announced that they would be out of network for some or all Medicare Advantage plans in 2024. A survey by the Healthcare Financial Management Association found that 16% of health systems plan to stop accepting one or more Medicare Advantage plans over the next two years, with another 45% 
considering it. So then the last section on this uh, answer to the question is, what is the impact on patients? When hospitals drop Medicare Advantage plans, it can have a significant consequence for patients. Patients may need to switch insurance plans or health care providers. Some patients may struggle to find affordable alternatives, especially if they can't easily switch back to original Medicare with a Medicare supplement. It's important for Medicare beneficiaries to stay informed about their hospital's network status and consider their options carefully during enrollment periods. So I th- I was really pleasantly surprised at the quality of the information I was getting from perplexity.ai. So if you're looking for a, a new search engine, maybe uh, Google is uh, really not uh, your style, then this You could do worse than to give perplexity a try. And now we come to an article that I just ran across this morning. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I don't believe it's very worthwhile. In fact, it's a little bit on the irritating side. This is a multi-page article written by a woman who apparently submitted to U.S. News. I don't know if that's U.S. News and World Report or if it's a different U.S. News, but, uh, of course, the old joke is U.S. News and World Report. Um, but the title, or the headline of the article is Best Medicare Part D, as in Delta, Companies. And uh, it goes on to talk at great length about this search that they put on in very many parts of the country for the best drug plans, the best Medicare Part D drug plans. And they came up, uh, well, that one of their search criteria was the STAR system that the Medicare go- or the uh, federal government uses for determining, you know, comparison shopping purposes. Uh, now, I've never had any faith in this STAR system, and reading this article uh, doesn't help me at all because, frankly, they list a bunch of companies that have higher than average STAR ratings. And I have shown you in the past that uh, some of the highest rated companies have some of the worst performance when it comes to the cost, the out of pocket cost that they would ask you to pay especially if you have generic drugs and don't have a lot of um, uh, need for Medicare Part D coverage. Uh, If you're right kind of in the middle of the pack or below as far as expensive drugs uh, go, uh, these these higher rated plans are going to rip you off. So uh, the companies that they cite as being really, really good. The best overall is a company I never even heard of called Medica, M-E-D-I-C-A. I don't think I have any clients in their particular areas of um, operation, um, but they have a rating of 3.9 out of 5 stars. And um, the next one is Elevance, which uh, used to be Anthem and it used to be Blue Cross of California. And then uh, Centene, which has the cheapest drug plan in all of America. Many, many, many of my clients find that Centene's well care value script is the plan that's going to serve them the best. And finally, in their list of best overall, Humana Inc. That's available in 50 states, and that is one of the highest cost plans there is. If anybody tells you, hey, I think here's, you know, a Humana drug plan that you should <clears throat> consider uh, purchasing, then you are, uh, you better run the other way because I have displayed many, many times the fact that Humana plans are so expensive that they're going to uh, cost you a ton of money. And I think I've got a comparison right here. Yes, I do. I had a client who uh, uh, asked me for a drug plan uh, thing. He gave me his list. I ran the the uh, information through the medical or the uh, government database, and his plan results in Dallas, uh, cheapest plan for him with all the drugs that he took. One drug uh, was all he has was zero cost, and that was provided by Wellcare Value Script. And the at the other end of the spectrum, the most expensive drug plan was the Humana Premier RX plan. Same drug, same guy, same location. They would ask him to pay almost $1,500 per year in costs, and that would be uh, his penalty for not having an agent who shopped carefully and used the same method I do for finding the most cost-effective Part D prescription drug plan. So then uh, the to wrap up this article, Part D companies, criteria to consider, an out-of-pocket limit of $2,000 before this change 
consumers faced a coverage gap and paid around 3000 before their prescription drug benefits resumed. That is uh, not exactly true at all. Uh, many other elements of this article are inaccurate. Cost sharing for insulin products, uh, $35 a month. Okay, well, that's really good until you realize that other companies that cannot produce insulin and make a decent profit at $35 a month have stopped uh, selling insulin, stopped making insulin available. <clears throat> and uh, the only good thing about the article was the very last <clears throat> section. And it said, as you compare part D is in dog drug plans available to you. Start by answering these questions. Does a plan cover my current prescriptions? That's very important. And that's why I go to the federal government database and put in each drug that a person might take. And then it says, when considering premiums, deductibles, and other out-of-pocket expenses, which plan keeps my expenses the lowest overall? Well, that's what the federal government database at medicare.gov slash plan dash compare will tell you which one is the lowest because it lines up all the plans available in your area and then it rates them in order of cost to you. And finally, does the plans network include my preferred pharmacies? Well, once again, that's what I do when I go to plan-compare at medicare.gov website. I look for the drugs and I look for the pharmacies that my client has indicated are the most important to them, the preferred pharmacies. And when you have those items, the location, the drugs, and the pharmacies, then that's when the government website crunches the numbers and shows you the least expensive drug plan. And that's the only criteria that you should be using. Here's an example of a, a problem that occurred. I've got a client in Missouri, and he said, uh, I have... Uh, uh, is there anything, he asked me, is there anything I need to do for next year? You helped me out last year. He was reminding me, you gave me a Medicare supplement with Mutual of Omaha, plus a prescription drug plan with Silver Script. Is there anything for me to do this fall to renew coverage or will it renew all automatically? All of the plans are working fine. So I can't think of any need to change or modify coverage. And I said, uh-oh, Silver Script. I think I remember hearing that Silver Strip was going to change its monthly premium. So I said, uh, you'll never have to do anything to renew your Medicare supplement plan from Mutual of Omaha except to make sure the premiums are paid. If you ever want to make a change for some reason, you should let me know. And then I said, the drug plan is a different story. You should have received an, a document from them called an annual notice of change, which we call ANOC. It is an early warning about any changes your drug plan might be changing in some way. Any changes your drug plan might be changing. You can see that I, you know, bang on the keyboard and uh, often don't proofread like I should. If you do nothing, the current plan will renew, but possibly not be the best choice for you next year. I looked through my file, your, your file, meaning I'm talking to this gentleman. I said, I looked through your file. And I did not find a list of prescription meds. If you don't take any regular prescription meds, you can just reply and tell me that. Otherwise, I've attached an experimental fillable form for me to receive the details from your list of drugs. And so then uh, he said, uh, hmm, well, I think everything is probably going to be okay. I don't, shouldn't have to change anything. And I said, not so fast, my friend. I just looked through the list of plans available next year in your county in Missouri, and I discovered only one Silver Script plan available. It has a premium of $44.90. Your ANOC might have warned you about this. Your new best drug plan for 2025 is the WellCare Value Script at zero monthly premium. This plan, in a desperate effort to remain profitable, has canceled its contracts with all insurance agents. Self-enrollment is uh, your only path to a brighter and cheaper future. I've attached a uh, set of instructions. And uh, he said, well, thank you for double checking. Just to be sure, I want to make sure that you're telling me what I should do. I should apply through um, their website. I sent him a link just for the prescription coverage alone at a zero premium per month. Is that correct? And I said, yep. And I told him how to use the link. And so hopefully he will have a somewhat better outcome than he would have had if he hadn't done anything at all, including not reading his ANOC. And so as I uh, start to go down the path of uh, my throat giving out, I'm going to turn it over to Randy to start wrapping things up for this episode. 
Well, you know, we were going to have to land the plane anyway, Doug, because, you know, we're just out of quarters. And it happens quite often. But before I do land the plane, we're coming in on, uh, let's come in on 22 left today. And take a pencil, grab it out of your drawer, and write this email address down, dbj at mlmmailbag.com. You can reach out to Doug 24 seven. He, he watches that 24 hours a day. And uh, you know, he will probably respond to you within milliseconds. That's somewhere. my goal. That's always my goal. <laughs> so anyway, having said that, don't forget Doug is licensed nationwide to help you with your Medicare supplement planning. Check us out at the website, medicareforthelazyman.com. We would appreciate it if uh, in your wanderings through the wilds of the Internet, if you could drop a review or two for us. It's all about the numbers coming into the end of the year. And last but certainly not least, thank you for joining us today. You could have been anywhere else doing anything else, and you weren't. You were with us, which is exactly where we like to have you. And the other thing I always have to mention, you probably were not tracking the time on your wristwatch, but I'll let you know. You have just spent about 32 and a half minutes with Doug Jones, the anti-insurance insurance guy, originally from Oklahoma, now back home in the nosebleed mountains behind Cave Creek, Arizona. And I'm putting him in, I'm going to be easy, I'm putting him in at 5,000 feet. I can live with 5,000 feet. It's got to be better in my throat than whatever else I've been doing. So thank you, Randy, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today. I'm hoping that you come back to see us during our next episode. Bye-bye.